2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, going with chapter 3, seeing we have this ministry, we're talking about the ministry now, as we have not received as we have received mercy, we faint not. We keep going. We're striving. We're working. It's a mercy that we have what we're doing. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We're not doing anything of lies. Lies are not part of this ministry. We're not making up stories. We're telling the truth. We're not doing uh, illustrations that are not true. We're not stealing from other preachers in their stories. There is no dishonesty in the ministry of Paul. Not walking with craftiness. And that's, again, that, that, that's a form of deceitfulness. That's, that's, you know, kind of worldly way of getting into people. And that's happening in churches today. Dishonesty and craftiness. You know, we'll you know, put money under a pew and a number of a pew. And have people come in and we'll choose that lucky pew and they get to go home with a prize or stuff and like that. And, you know, if we can get them on the Romans road, not understand, get them say this prayer. Or, you know, we get them think that they're coming to a party. Maybe they're coming to a fellowship dinner and not preaching. That's craftiness. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. They're doing true to the word of God. And yeah, that's not today. But again, we've already read a couple chapters ago that people are already perverting the word of God. People are already being dishonest in the pulpit. They're already using craftiness. They're already doing deceitfulness. We read one part in Corinthians that someone said, hey, there is no resurrection. So the same problems that we have today are the same problems going on in Paul's day. Nothing's new under the sun, uh, Solomon says. We just have more communications to see it more broad than what Paul saw. Paul couldn't turn on the television set and see all the news of Asia. He would get it in, in bands by the people coming off the ship. We see it worldwide news. So the word of God, the, the ministry, is with honesty. It's not with craftiness. There's no deceitfulness. But by manifestation of the true, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, we are coming in that pulpit with truth. And it makes me sick to hear a man of God get in that pulpit and he tells a story and it, it's a lying story. It's a funny story of a lie. Well, you know what? That's an abomination to God. That's not what Paul would do. But, now watch this. Now, we, now let's jump to Jesus preaching about the parable of the sower and the seed. But if our gospel, our gospel, the word, See, handling the word of God deceitfully, they're not doing that. If our gospel, Jesus Christ died for our sin, was buried, and was rose again the third day, that is the message. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So, the word can be hiding. It may not get out to wherever you want it to get out. In whom the God small g of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now remember that sower? The, the, the seeds that fell on the ground and the birds came. And Jesus told us, well, you know, after the, after the disciples said, well, what does it mean in this parable? And it said the birds are the wicked one. It's Satan. It's the devil. Well, here he is as Paul is preaching the gospel. Here he's showing up after Paul spreading the seeds and he's blinding the people. You hand him a piece of paper and they look at it like, I don't know this thing, crumpled up and throw in a garbage can. But what they did is they just crumpled up and threw away the, the gospel. They threw out the way of life. Satan's told him, get rid of that. You don't need that. Satan's told him, I've even heard, well, you know, they, they bring it to their priest and say, hey, I was handing this on the street. 
Tell me about it. And then that priest would lie to him. They would even bring it to a Baptist preacher and say, hey, look what I got this from this guy who handed it to me at the grocery store when he's checking out. And they go to in a, in a Baptist, uh, whatever you want to call it, would even lie to him. Satan. Listen, Satan's in the pulpit. Satan would blind them to the gospel. And he will use men and women. Paul is preaching the gospel. It's being hid. And one of the things is Satan is there blinding many of them. Your results of whatever ministry is God given to you, you are not ever going to get 100%. That's a lie. Because if you are witnessing, you are doing what God's told you to do, you better rest assured you turn around, there's Satan working. And he's working all around you. And all the people that you're witnessing to, all the people you're giving track, you better rest assured that Satan is somehow stopping them from getting that word. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Why is it my father say? Because Satan has blinded his mind because he does not want to believe. There it is. And he's had the gospel. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. And when I had that message out of John chapter 3, being a cockroach. It says, men hate the light because the light will reprove them of who they are. You know why they hate preaching? You know why they hate the gospel? Because when that light shines in their light, they're like, oh man, I can see what I really am. Turn off the light because I don't want to see it. I don't want to be the sinner that God's recognized me. I just want to do my own thing and let God leave me alone. Turn that light off. Least the light, the glorious gospel. Again, the gospel, the gospel is the word of Christ. Who is the image of God? Should shine unto them. Satan turns off that light. So they don't even get no glimpse of Jesus Christ who is God. That's Satan's doing. And we got to rest assured, and I hate to say this, that many would go to Broadway, but many of them people, of the many that do go off the lake of fire, is because Satan is, is taking that seed away, totally. And then those people that Satan is taking the seed away, is because they believe not. So it's not all Satan. People who refuse to believe God. And you stay there, let, let me read you over here something in Hebrew. Hebrews 11, I'll tell you one of, the, one of the biggest things why Satan can work in their life. It says, but without faith it's impossible to please him, God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's some people who don't even believe in God. I mean, God the Father, Jehovah of the Bible. Now, they believe in God, Mary. They believe in God in, in plagues. They mean God in angels. They mean God in religion. They mean God of, 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 of creation, of evolution. They, they don't see Christ, who is the image of God. That's the big difference. And that point, when they have that unbelief, Satan's allowed to come in there and go, okay, boom. In order to be saved, you got to acknowledge who God is. You're not going to acknowledge who God is. God is not going to give you no more light. He's going to allow Satan to say, okay, turn it off. But you've heard. But you've heard. For we preach not ourselves. Paul didn't give no time to himself. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake listen you know what we are the servants of Jesus for you the church and we preach Jesus Christ the life the death the burial the resurrection all about Jesus. That's all there is to be preached about. He told one point in the book, in Corinthians, the first one, he said, listen, the only thing I want to hear about you guys is Jesus. That's it. 
I don't hear anything else. I don't care about the, the arena games. I don't care about the Olympics. I don't care about, you know, the, the test scores. I want to know about Jesus. If us Christians talked more about Jesus, maybe we get that revival that you would want. But Jesus is on the back plate, the back burner, and the burner's turned off. You're not going to get nothing. For God. Who commended the light to shine out of darkness. Now wait a minute. He said up here. Verse 4. Least the light the glorious gospel of Christ. Now for God who commended the light to shine out of darkness. That light. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. That's what's saying right there. That light is God giving it to us. The shine out of darkness. This world is in darkness. There is no light without Jesus Christ. There is no love without God. Because the Bible says God is love. Has shined in our hearts. Saved people. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You got that light? You take that light to other people and show the knowledge that you know. What do you know? What's the only thing you can know if you know anything? Tell them how you got saved. That's the best thing you know. And go from there. Read, study, learn, get more knowledge, and tell them about Jesus. The ministry is all about Jesus. We preach not ourselves. And when you go through the radio station and you go through the television station, how these ministries are all based upon the person's name. And I could give you all kinds of names. Titles of programs. They're man's name. There's one name. There's only only the only name given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And that's not a man's name. That is the man Christ Jesus name. The name above all names. That's what they're preaching. He already said, listen, I heard you guys, the first Corinthians, some of Paul, some of us. Knock off the man. Knock off the man worship. Get into Jesus. When you're witnessing on the streets, you're not supposed to be witnessing about your church. You're supposed to be witnessing about Jesus Christ. The only time your church name should come into being, if they receive Christ as their Savior, and now they need a place to go and worship and learn the Bible, then and only then should your church and your pastor's name come up. Only then. It's what Paul said. I'm sorry that modern churches of, of the Baptists have failed. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So this flesh is, is an earthen vessel. What's inside this, this skin, flesh, lust, is the treasure. And what's inside of us is the indwelling Holy Spirit. God's going to renew this flesh that we see one day to a glorious body. But what's inside of us? The Holy Spirit. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, we're empty clay pots. With the Holy Spirit in us, our ministry is not this clay. It's not this filth that we call skin and hair. It's the Holy Spirit working in us for Jesus Christ for the gospel. It's not to go up there with my pearly white teeth and make everybody, oh, I like this guy, Joe. No, no, no. It's the Holy Spirit working in us. Some don't have the Holy Spirit when they're involved in the ministry. They don't have that spirit. They're just a vessel, a clay pot, nothing inside. Jesus told those Pharisees, you know what? You're just whited sepulchers. You look beautiful on the outside, but they're dead bones inside. A Christian, he's dead on the outside, but he's got the riches and treasures of the Holy Ghost on the inside. We're not to be the Pharisees. We are troubled on every side, and Paul was. 
Some people would even say today that Paul was never saved by the way his life was. Paul does not hold a mark of Christian because, you know, he didn't have happiness. He didn't have joy. Oh, yeah, he did. But he had God's joy. He had the Holy Spirit joy, even with the trials and tribulations and the stoning and the rejection. Yet, not distressed. We're not distressed by troubles. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. The, the ministry, the suffering in the ministry goes through all, even 2017. But don't give up. Keep going. It's for Christ. Remember what Christ, Christ went through troubles. Christ was perplexed. Christ was persecuted. He was forsaken. Why can't we? Forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. See, it's the death of Christ. Now, that doesn't mean you carry a dead Jesus Christ around. That means the death of Jesus Christ. That was our sin offering. That was the blood shed for our sins. And then you carry the resurrected Christ, the finished work that made us sealed Christians and not a religion. Jesus died for our sins. He came out of that cross victorious, successful, signed, sealed, and delivered. You go out to people, you tell them that Jesus died for their sin, and that's not it. He arose from the grave, victorious. That's what you tell them. That's what you do. And when you care about the, the death of Jesus, give this flesh death. Put it down in the graveyard. Bury it with the deepest shovel. Let that which has been resurrected be alive and well for the people to see, not this flesh. Life also may be made manifest in our bodies. What? The living, the serving, the loving Jesus Christ. For we which live are already delivered unto death for Jesus. Listen, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I've already got the hope. But there are people out there who don't have the hope. They need to know about the hope. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. See, we're going to die. But we're not without hope. We're going to get crowns if we do right. We're going to get rewarded. We're going to get to see the one that died for us. We're going to see God one day. Not everybody. Not everybody's heard. Not everybody understands yet. Let you be the living example. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. You see what we're doing as apostles? How do you know Christianity is right? How do you know Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? Look how we're living. Look how the, how the prophecy spoke in Jesus said. The apostles have said, listen, marvel not the world hates you. No, it hated me first. The world's going to hate you. You're going to get persecution. What other religion gets such persecution as those of Christ? Never none but those that are called Christians. True. You know how you know we're the ones, this is right? Look how they're treating us. The world hates Christianity, but it loves its own. The mark that you are a Christian is the world does not want to have anything to do with you. Because you have Christ. You have the light. That world hates the light. You know, the earth goes half its spear in darkness and keeps spinning around. There's always a dark place on the earth. And that dark place on the earth is mostly when all the crimes, all the excitement, all the entertainment is happening. So death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith. So there is a spirit of faith. 
according as is written. All right, here's something written. Psalms 116.10, I believe. Therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So the spirit of faith will make you open your mouth, Romans 10. For knowing that he, God, was which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, shall present us with you. We're going to the resurrection. That is our hope. That is the signification of Christianity. God raised Jesus Christ up, and as he raised Jesus Christ up, so will he raise us up. What happened? Let's go back to Acts chapter 1. What's going on? He's sitting there. He's having a conversation with the 11. You know, whatever they were saying, doing, doing, doing. And next thing you know, he goes up to the clouds. What does second, oh, is it? I forget. It's first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us. One day, boom, we're going to be in the clouds. Just as Christ went up, so are we. Suffering is only a moment of time. Suffering will end at your death or the rapture, whichever comes first. And if we suffer, we're going to reign. We're going to receive rewards. But in that suffering, in that persecution, remember, we're dead already. This flesh is dead already. But the spirit and the soul are alive. And all we do is the day we die, all we do is we go to Jesus. But while we're here for a reason, we're here to tell people about Jesus. We're here for those who have believed on Jesus to raise them up to spiritual growth. And nothing else. The world's got it, you know, CEOs and money and goods and all that. That's not what God kept you here for. For all things are for your sakes. The growth of the church. If those apostles can do it, we can do it. If the pastor can do it, we can do it. If that family can go through the trials and tribulations that they're going through, we can do it. If God could help that, that Christian over there, he can help us. If God helped me last year with this problem, he can help me this year with this problem. If God could help me with all the problems through my life that I've had, man, this ain't nothing compared to all the problems I've had in my life. He can help me now. You got a Christian despair and say, hey, listen, you know what? I've seen God do some things. I've not been anything like what you're in. But God's brought me through things. There's victory through God. Come on. Stay on. Stay with it. Keep going. God is faithful. Let's keep going. Strengthen them. The worst thing can do is we die and go to heaven. That's the worst thing. The only thing I fear about death is the pain. I don't want to have a painful death. I just want to go nice and easily. But who knows? But even in painful death for Christ himself, I've read stories. You know what? It was torture, yet it was sweet. I read some stories about some, some Christians who died on being burnt to death singing hymns. I've never heard anybody in an electric chair sing anything. See, we are to learn by other Christian sufferings. We are to pick up on that. We're to help them because we suffer. We're to grow strong. A weak Christian is a Christian that's had no adversary, no troubles or problems in his life. He don't need God. Prayer is a wonderful thing in time of adversary. Get some, you know, in these books about prayer. No, don't read a book about prayer. Say, God, give me a little tribulation in my life. Then I'll learn how to pray. Tribulation will get you right in contact with God right away. I know it. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, abundant grace, might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. Thanksgiving after trouble, persecuted, distress, 
Yes, Thanksgiving. You say, what about the problems you're going through right now, Stai? How can you thank God for that? I still got a foot. I use a wheelchair, but I ain't bound in a wheelchair. I can walk. I thank God that God's given me the ability to get the treatment I'm getting right now. I thank God the ability that God's given me a doctor knows what he's doing about my foot. I thank God I got a roof over my head. There are Christians right now in third world countries don't even have a little tiny bit of, of the luxury I have today. I ought not be complaining. Rejoice evermore, I think the Bible says. Isn't that, isn't that a good memory verse to do? Two words. Rejoice evermore. Is that three words? Two or three words. What about this verse? How about this verse in the Bible? Remember, this hard verse when we're talking about what we're talking about right now with the ministry. What about this one? Jesus wept. That's the simplest memory verse that a beginning child in a church in a Sunday school class can learn. Jesus wept. That, that, that's right. It should be Jesus was happy. Jesus happy. Jesus laughed. No, but the simplest Bible verse we have in the Bible is suffering, troubles, problems. Jesus wept. Do you ever think about that? This world is a veil of tears. And when you say life is good, bull, it ain't good. You haven't lived life to put something that's stupid on the back of your car or a bumper sticker or a sign. Life is good. Jesus Christ is good. And when Jesus Christ is good and righteous, you can say, thank you, God. You can find some thanksgiving. And you can give God the glory. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perishes, this flesh, see this flesh? You see this, this garbage? We don't wash, it stinks. Yet inward man is renewed day by day. How's that? The day you get up, God gives you a little more. Go for it. Keep going. Don't quit. It's a tough battle, Paul is saying. Paul is warning us, say, listen, okay, you're saved now. But if you really want to be a Christian, we're going to learn about armor in a couple books. Ephesians, right? Yeah. Ephesians, we're going to need, what are you going to need armor for? What is armor for? Take down a scrapyard, get some money, and you can go, no, it's, it's heavy, it's awkward, and you use it for battle. Anybody that tells someone, if you get saved and your life will be, you are a liar. You've deceived them. You use craftiness. And God gets the glory. Our inward man, your soul, is renewed day by day. You get new, it's like a restart for a Christian. For our light affliction. Have you read what Paul has gone through? And he can turn around and say, our light affliction. Compared to what? What did Jesus go through? Did Paul ever have his, his, his bones and, and muscles and meat ripped off? He was stoned. But that's nothing to a cat of nine tails. That's nothing to having nails put through your, your hands and your feet. Our light affliction. Why? Because our life is short. Which is but a moment. For a moment. Now, it may seem like a, a long time. But time goes by quick. We're in 2017. I can look back. 10 years, 2007, like, wow. 17 years ago, this entire planet was going to be wiped out by Y2K. What happened in 17 years? 
14 years ago, I had a, had a baby girl. Here she is now. 21 years ago, I had a son. Here he is now. I am 48 years old. I remember as a child, couldn't wait to be old. Now I can't wait to get back to be young. It's quick. It's school's done. School took forever, but once that school age, boy, it went. Time is quick for a moment. Working for us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. Our tribulations, troubles, and problems are going to be a lot better in eternity than they are now. <clears throat> First of all, there is no trouble, distress, perplex, persecution, forsaking. There's none of that in Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. There's none of that in glory. And if we go through all this and we survive all this and we endure to the end to Jesus Christ, the blessed oath, there are rewards and there are crowns. Glory. Weight of glory. A crown being put on your head. Exceedingly. Four or five crowns can be earned. Push on. Keep going. But know it's going to be there. Those aching pains, they may never go away. While we look not at the things which are seen, bandages, hospital, guns, crime, death, everything we can see, but at the things which are not seen, crowns, New Jerusalem, Jesus Christ, God, the cherubim, the four and twenty-four elders. Oh, let's look at that. Let's keep our eyes on that. For the things which are seen, death, hospitals, police, drugs, alcohol, people, are temporal. Peter says there's going to be a time that this heaven and earth is going to in a fervent heat. It's going to be gone. But the things which are not seen, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all the angels, the seraphim, New Jerusalem, the throne, are eternal. So what Paul is closing this saying, the ministry is, to be honest, the ministry has hard times. The ministry will have Satan follow you. There will be suffering and persecution. Take your eyes off what you can see. Put your eyes on Jesus, what you can't see. Keep on going. Finish your mark. And brother, will it be worth it? Meanwhile, strengthen other Christians. Get strengthened by other Christians. Strengthen yourself what God's already done for you. Strengthen other Christians. Help other churches. And keep it in thanksgiving and you'll be going well. That's what Paul's saying. So. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I believe that's how the song goes. And yes, you, your eyes are going to go off. The doctor's going to give you bad news. Uh, it's going to hurt. It, it, it's going to look bad. It's going to look, uh, you know, terrible. Thank God and keep on going. Because one day we'll, we'll, we'll cast our eyes upon him and then it'll be worth it all. The little moments we, we have problems here for God, rightfully for God, wait till we get to glory. Wait till we get to glory. And I can't express it enough.